How do you take the best of yourself and deliver it to students in a way that unlocks the best of themselves and do all of that as a virtual academic coach, largely working on Zoom? Hmm? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Let's dig in. So, Here's the deal. I work with hundreds of educators who are transitioning into an academic coaching practice or who work within a school environment and work one-to-one -one with students or one to small group to help unlock student skills. And one of the pleasures of my work is watching folks grow over time. I have a community and I invite people who want to really dig into the anti-boring toolkit and really dig in to how to be excellent academic coaches for students to stay with me for a minimum of a year so that we can learn a bunch of tools and practice those tools together. And one of the just beauties that I get to witness is this unlocking, <laughs> unlocking of people's personalities. They start the coaching program often in their head, trying to get everything right. Perfectionism is a big issue with people who are attracted to my program. Maybe it's an issue with educators in general. I don't know. But we have to unlearn some perfectionism. And as we unlearn it, we start relaxing into ourselves more. And as I was thinking about this video today, I was realizing there are actually three specific things that I notice we work on through the course of the year in my Anti-Boring Educators Club. And I wanted to uh, gift these three things to you all who are such religious followers of me on YouTube, and I thank you so much. And just by the way, a little like on this video, a little subscribe to my channel would be so, so helpful, and I thank you in advance. <laughs> so let's look at these three skills, because you can start practicing them today, if you like. And if you're a member of my community, you may not realize we've been working on these three things, but we have. And they all start with B. Isn't that fun? They all start with B. So the first one here, beliefs. We start unpacking what are the beliefs that you come into this work as an academic coach with? How do you think you're supposed to act with students? What have you inherited from your own academic experiences around the way the relationship between educator and student should be? And pay attention to whether what you've inherited, the beliefs you've inherited, are the actual beliefs you want to have. <laughs> and often, as we in our community calls start unpacking the beliefs inherent um, in the questions folks ask, for example, I often get questions like, how do you get a student to dot, 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 be more motivated or study more effectively or whatever it is? Now notice, that seems like a fine question, right? How do you get a student to follow through with? But actually, when you pay attention to the power dynamic that's implicit in those words, there's force, there is power, there is an expectation that we're trying to get the student to submit to whatever we think is best for them, right? And in this case, it's being more motivated, perhaps. So when I gently, when I notice some beliefs like that running in the questions that educators inside uh, my community calls ask, we're able to gently notice, oh wow, there is, there is a belief there that you're invited to look at more closely and just make sure that it's a belief you really want to have. And often once we make those beliefs visible, they come to the surface, we realize, oh gosh, actually my true values are in a different place than the beliefs that I inherited from the teaching or the parenting or the whatever <laughs> that I've done in my previous career. And that is a fascinating thing. So under or looking into your beliefs, uncovering your beliefs is the first of three B's that I recommend if you're wanting to unlock your own true self so that more importantly, you can unlock students' authentic selves. Okay, what's the second B? The second B is 
body. What is your body, whoop, what is your body doing during coaching sessions? This is especially important when so many of us are coaching on Zoom these days. But it's also important if you're seeing students in person. How does your body accidentally communicate some of the outdated beliefs that you might be coming into coaching with? Now, and I want you to notice in all my videos, and if you ever come to any of my calls, you'll see it in my calls, I'm moving a lot, right? I am very conscious that I don't want to be a still talking head, sharing from here up, because that limits my own expressiveness, and it, it communicates to the student that not all of you is welcome here. Now, I'm also not saying that every person should be as lively as I am. I get it. I am an outlier as far as my energy is concerned. But especially virtually, make sure that you are sitting in such a way that you have more range of movement. You can come closer to the camera, come further away from the camera, side to side. That kind of moving about suggests that you are a 3D person inside a 3D space and it helps students feel more comfortable to be themselves in front of the camera as well. And again, all of this applies if you're inside an office. The more you move around, the more you surprise students with what your body is doing. <laughs> again, I get that. I get that I'm an outliner, outlier and you might not want to do this, but I'm just remembering that the other day I was doing a presentation at a school and I was realizing that I had been talking for a long time and we'd been very heady. And there was an opportunity to talk about the, the role that the body plays in learning. And I ended up just surprising everybody by doing one of those heel clicks. Do you know it? I can't quite show you right now, but you know, you put one leg up and you click your other heel to it, kind of like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. It sort of surprised and shocked everybody and they laughed. And again, I'm not saying you should do this, but I'm trying to show that I have found ways to be my fullest self with my body, both inside Zoom, as well as in um, walled environments. And that really helps students relax and feel permission to be themselves as well. I got one more B for you. But before I do that, I wanna invite you to check out a free gift that I have made for educators who are interested in growing their skills as an academic coach. You can specifically be somebody who works one-to-one -one with students coaching. You might be a teacher who's thinking, you know what, I get how I could be a better teacher if I also learned how to be a coach. Head to GretchenWegner.com slash secret to find out my secrets to how to unlock the best in students and the best in yourself as an academic coach. Okay, our final B. Belonging. To what extent do you include the student in decision making about them? Now, some of you might see this question and think it's just a little like, duh, if you're coaching, don't you include the student? <laughs> But here's the thing. Actually, I notice by the questions people ask in our anti-boring educators calls when they're new in the community, they often forget that the student is a great source of information about the student. And when, when educators ask me questions, I'll often say, well, did, did you ask the student what their preference is? And people are often like, oh, no, I forgot. <laughs> And often that's because when that happens, we've uncovered a belief. And that is that adults make better decisions for kids than kids can make for themselves. Or if we're working with adult students, that teachers make better decisions for students than students can make for themselves. I truly believe if we're honest, we, whoops, <laughs> we have that belief inside of us. And if we do, we then often leave students out of really crucial decisions related to their interests, related to their academic habits, and related to their well being. So, this is just a gentle reminder to 
Let the student belong. Never, try never to make a decision that involves them without at least finding out what their preferences are, how it lands with them. If you're tempted to go to the parent first, sometimes it's really good to get the parent's idea, but also make sure you know what the student's idea is too. Okay, pop quiz, before we go, what are the three Bs? I'm quizzing myself too. This is good retrieval practice. Belief, body, belonging. <laughs> Work on those three things and I promise you'll feel more and more yourself during your academic coaching sessions with students. And I also promise that you will um, bring it out in your students because you're modeling it so well yourself. Take care, y'all.